I'm Kat and it's time to do the January wrap up. So I have to say that I'm pretty happy with how I started off the year. I read a ton of different things as you can already see and I managed to watch movies, I managed to watch TV shows, so as a whole it was a very well balanced month and i'm just i'm excited i'm excited for this new year so let's start with movies and the first one i watched was if bill street could talk i read this book by james baldwin in january last year it was really impactful the story was brutal it's it's the best word to describe it really and this movie was an extension of that it was really well adapted very well acted every character just felt so real and the story just came to life so beautifully i loved the way this movie looked and the story was just what i already knew it would be it was very well adapted in that sense if you've never seen this movie if you've never read this book i highly highly encourage that you do it tells the story of a black man and his girlfriend and their families and this black man is wrongfully accused of a crime, wrongfully imprisoned. It was an incredibly moving story and it's just, I'm really happy that I finally got to watch it, especially after reading the book. Then I watched a mess of a movie and another one that has been on my list for years and years, but I don't know if I should have wasted my time watching it, honestly, and that is Rock and Rolla. This movie came out in 2008, 2009, you can tell, and it was just a mess. The story was all over the place. We got introduced to some characters, but we didn't understand their whole point. I didn't love it. There was a lot of homophobic jokes that, I mean, we, we've seen too much of. I cannot recommend this book so let's quickly move on. And the last movie I watched this month was Shazam which is a little bit outside my comfort zone. When I was younger I was more into the superhero movies especially when they started coming out so Marvel stuff I watched a lot of that but then I kind of fell off and I never picked it back up again. Let's let's put it that way. So I decided to watch Shazam because the main actor, what's his name? Zachary Levi, I think. I love him so much. He's so funny. And I I had heard good things about Shazam, that it was funny, that it was like a good movie, not just a good superhero movie, but that it was fun. And it was! It was really enjoyable, nothing too deep and nothing too serious, but it was a nice afternoon. And now on to TV shows. I finished season 4 of How to Get Away with Murder. Slowly but surely, I am making my way through this TV show and I'm loving it so so much this season is my least favorite so far though i still really enjoyed it i was not the biggest fan and i'm not the biggest fan of laurel as a character and in this season we focus a lot on her and things that she's going through her family so that wasn't my favorite but at the same time i think they wrapped it up really really well I loved how it ended, so now I'm really excited to continue on, on to season 5, and then the last season, which is season 6. So I'm almost done, and I really, really love this show. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. It was one of my favorites of last year. Highly, highly recommend if you love kind of lawyer-ish, mystery, drama type shows. This is great. And the last show I watched is not that I watched all of it in January, I just finished it in January, is Girl Boss. I started this, I don't know how many months ago, but I hadn't finished it yet. I don't have much to say about it. I didn't love it. I didn't think much of it really. It was just okay. And now we move on to the books, which you can see I read a lot of this month without planning to. I just was in the mood. I have to say that I have a mix of old favorites that I decided to reread and new stuff that was just a bit meh. So let's get into it. The first one I read was Blue It's by Maggie Nelson and this is a very peculiar 
little book. This is told in paragraphs. Like that is the best way I can explain this book. This is a little bit philosophical. It tells a narrative of a character who's going through a breakup, but at the same time, she's kind of in love with the color blue. So we see, we go in and out of the narrative. I don't really know how to describe it better than that. It's odd. Then, and we're starting off on the wrong foot, but we will end beautifully. Trust me. Then we have we are all completely beside ourselves by karen joy fowler i hate this book i bought it so long ago i think it was 2014 i can't not read what i have on my shelves so i pushed through with this one i had the audiobook so that helped a lot and i hated it but <laughs> what saved me was that I finally reread A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. I read, reread A Court of Thorns and Roses last year in anticipation kind of for A Court of Silver Flames. I was just in the mood to get back into this world. And so it just, the timing was perfect. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I love it so much. I love the writing. I love the character arc, how Sarah J. Maas just develops everything so beautifully in such a believable way. I love all these characters, all of them, all of them so, so much. And it was just a complete joy to get back into this world. I highly recommend that you pick this up if you haven't already. Start with A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is definitely my favorite of the series. And next up, we have a romance. This is the Romance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. You've probably seen this book around. It's one of those that all of a sudden everybody is reading it. I'm no exception. So this tells the story of Gavin and Thea. They are married. They have two little girls, but their marriage is not in a good place. They are getting divorced, but Gavin is not okay with this. He doesn't want this. And so a group of his friends have this book club where they read romance novels to inform and learn about romance and how to be better lovers, better communicators, better partners in general. And they see Gavin so down in the dirt that they decide to help him. I think this was the first book I've ever read where we don't see the characters getting together for the first time, but we see a story of rehabilitation of a relationship. And I think because of that, I didn't enjoy it as much because we know these characters already have a past together. We know they already have a story between them. And even though we see flashbacks, I don't feel like we had enough of it to kind of understand their relationship completely so i enjoyed this it wasn't a favorite there are some very very funny moments where the guys in this book club are kind of hitting gavin over the head with feminist ideology and kind of explaining the patriarchy and why women uh, feel certain things because they've read so many books and it's just it sounds fake. <laughs> it sounds very patronizing at times. And so it's hilarious because it, it sounds so fake. Next up, we have Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera because I want to read more fantasy. I had this on my shelves and I decided what a better way to start the year than with new fantasy. Case in point, but unfortunately, I didn't love it. This tells a story of two brothers. They live in a world where there are people with powers. Think a little like X-Men. And then there are obviously people who aren't born with powers, but want to be powerful. So there are different creatures that can give you those powers, mythical creatures. I was going into this book with such high expectations, but I really, really didn't enjoy it. And I'm really disappointed in that. I feel like this book didn't do a particularly good job at introducing us to the world. I feel like that was a missed opportunity because you can see that Adam Silvera really took his time to develop this world, the mythology, every little thing that goes on in this book. And obviously we can't cram everything into the first book, but 
it feels like we are not completely aware of what what's happening i didn't really enjoy it and i i'm not planning on continuing on with that series continuing on with the romance because i absolutely cannot read just one romance i decided to go back to one that i know i love so so much take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert one of my favorite books of last year one of my favorite books ever i can definitely say i just i adore this book i adore these characters the way this relationship is developed perfection you can tell that i'm really excited for the release of actor age eve brown because i'm just rereading all the talia hibbert i love her writing so so much i love this book even more the second time around this deals with that fake relationship trope if you love romance pick this up it's insanely good i love it then we have a bit of non-fiction and that is coventry by rachel kusk this is a collection of essays a little bit of a memoir type book and i didn't love it <laughs> I didn't love this at all. There are a lot of essays that deal with motherhood, which I appreciated though I didn't love. So this was kind of a miss for me. I still have her other book outline in my collection to read, but that is fiction. So I'm hoping I enjoy that one more. Then I read a classic and that is The Ice Palace by, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm so sorry, Tarjay Vissas. I have no idea whatsoever how to say the name but this is translated from Norwegian the description made this book seem like this would be a bit more fantastical I thought this would have some magical realism elements but that was not the case at all this seems like a short book but it took me three days to read it's a very heavy book I didn't love the way this was written and I don't know if it has something to do with the translation. This tells the story of two small girls, two young girls, who meet for the first time and they have a very weird relationship. And then one of them goes missing. It deals with grief, this whole community coming together to try and find this little girl and all that effort trying to be there for the little girl who is still around. Not what I was expecting. But then I finally read The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare Wesley Chu. I wanted to read this when it came out, but the end of last year was very chaotic. I wanted to read too many things at once, so I decided to save this for the beginning of the year. I knew that I would love this book, and I do. I love it so much. I love Magnus. I love his relationship with Alec. The fact that this book takes place between other series in the Shadowhunter universe is just a little beautiful safety net for someone like me who is always so stressed for the safety of the characters. This follows another adventure from Alec and Magnus. We see them in Shanghai. We see them with the original Mortal Instruments cast, the original gang, which has the whole of my heart and for some reason i can't get into it because of spoilers but this gave me a little bit of percy jackson vibes the way that those characters go on missions and it's very high stakes but at the same time the people they deal with even though they are mythological creatures are very like approachable i felt the same way here i absolutely cannot wait to see the third book in this trilogy i think that one is going to be higher stakes for sure the way we leave things off here there's no possible way that that will be low stakes i loved the lost book of the white definitely a new favorite and it was just an amazing adventure the next one i finished was can't even how millennials became the burnout generation i read this in ebook form and I really, really appreciated and enjoyed this book. This is nonfiction, and as the tagline says, this is kind of a social commentary type of book. It analyzes how we got to the situation we are in, our generation, in relation to work. The way that work takes over our lives in a way that it usually didn't with our parents' and grandparents' generations. 
I really, really appreciate it. I think the second half of this book more so than the first half. I wasn't the biggest fan of the writing, but the the content of it was so interesting, so important to me. The way work takes over our lives more and more so. We live to work and to show that we're working. I really enjoyed this and I would definitely be interested in reading more on this subject. And lastly, this is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas, the third book in the Akatar series. And I remember the first time I read this book, I was a wreck because I had seen a spoiler which didn't turn out to be true. So whenever I would pick this up, I would be bawling my eyes out because I was expecting something very, very bad to happen and it didn't turn out to happen, which made me so happy. <laughs> and knowing that this time around made me enjoy this book so much more because my stress levels were not as high. I love it, obviously. I prefer A Court of Mist and Fury because in comparison to this one, that is lower stakes, which is perfect for me. Um, but this is a wonderful, wonderful finale, even though we are going to have more books. But the way this finishes off this problem, I really, really enjoy that. Seeing now, as we're going to have more books, I definitely picked up more on the little um, threads that Sarah J Maas decided to leave unfinished. I'm really excited to see where she goes from this and how the characters are going to be explored in A Court of Silver Flames. And that's it! Those are all the books, all the movies and TV shows that I watched in January. I'm really happy with everything that I consumed this month and I'm really excited for all the new stuff that is coming out. Please tell me down below in the comments what were your favorites of the month? Do we have anything in common? Are you excited for anything that I talked about? Let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye!